Hey there, thanks for joining me on today's Tropical Weather Impact. It is Thursday, August the 14th. I'm meteorologist Peyton Malone here in New Orleans. As we continue to watch things heat up out in the tropics, here's what's coming up on this episode. We are watching what about a sneaky gulf system trying to form. We're going to talk about while well, the chances are low, it's something areas around South Texas are going to need to monitor here the next 24 hours. Aaron, the latest update just came down at 10 a.m. Central. It is growing stronger. We do expect a hurricane from this in the next 12 to 24 hours in the East Coast. We're not letting down our guard. We're going to talk about some interesting trends that we've noticed over the past 24 hours here with some of our models and why models are still kind of flip flopping and windshield wiper. Um, I'm still doing that as we go throughout the next, well, at least a couple of days. We're probably going to continue to see some of those trends. So here's the latest on the two features. Aaron's way out in the Atlantic still and Invest 98 in the Gulf. I wanted to start with Invest 98 since it's closer to home here and it's got some people's attention. Now the Hurricane Center as of their 7 a.m. update this morning are giving it a 20% chance of development. Now there's a couple things working against this forming. Time is going to be the number one thing here. It's only got today and before tomorrow it's moving inland there in South Texas and so it's moving a pretty good rate at this point flying to the north there. Now there is some guidance that suggests we could have some low pressure forming. This part of the Gulf is notorious for quick spin up systems. The water temperatures are boiling hot and sometimes the conditions are just right and you do get these short lived, but sometimes depressions or even named storms can form from these. And so that's what we're watching here. Hurricane hunters, they are expected to fly out into this later this morning and afternoon. They're going to get in there and check it out this afternoon and let us know what they find. So far on satellite, still looks like it's somewhat unorganized. I don't see any winds on the western side of it getting pulled up, which tells us I'm not seeing significant signs of spin in here, but we'll watch it. There is a little bit more of a wind coming off here, and so we may start to see some low pressure form underneath these intense showers and thunderstorms that have been bubbling up all morning long and models have been latching onto this. This is just one of our precision cast models that show we could have some low pressure trying to form here. Maybe it's more in the mid levels, but could work its way down to the surface. Either way, here we are Friday morning. We have heavy rain, gusty winds, rip currents moving into the South Texas coast from Brownsville to Corpus Christi. So again, this is a little sneaky system as we call it, as it could ramp up quickly and then well, it's as over as fast as it started. It'll move inland Friday afternoon and bring a risk for heavy rain across areas like San Antonio, Austin into Friday night and Saturday morning. So that is something to monitor as well. I don't see it being an issue at all in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama or the Florida Panhandle. So that's Invest 98. Tropical Storm Aaron, the 10 a.m. advisory has a stronger storm. We're up to 60 mile per hour winds, still moving at a 17 mile per hour rate. That's what it was at 4 a.m. this morning and pressures down to 999 millibars. This tells us that this storm is organizing our satellite images of it this morning. I mean, that's a classic tropical cyclone there. You've got banding features. You've got upper level clouds. It's venting itself. It's in a phenomenal a phenomenal environment right now. Low wind shear and it's starting to move into uh, warmer water temperatures, which is why this thing is probably going to be a hurricane by the end of tonight or into early tomorrow morning. Luckily, the hurricane hunters have all been stationing down in the St. Croix Islands. That's where they set up to fly out into these storms way on out here. We're going to have planes flying into this thing continuously, basically from now on through the rest of its life as it nears the islands, as it nears um, at least staying off the East Coast later next week. And so we will have constant data. Also, this will be the first direct data we're gathering where we can actually put it into our models and see if we're going to see any changes there with the direct data. So here's the latest cone. No big shifts right now in uh, what we're seeing here for the islands. There's the Virgin Islands. There's Puerto Rico. That's where the hurricane hunters are stationed right now in St. Croix, Dominican Republic, Turks and Caicos. We have a strengthening hurricane by Friday night into Saturday into Sunday. Notice continuing to ramp up into a major storm. So we do still think we're going to have the potential for a major hurricane just north of the islands by this weekend. Now the turn, the turn is crucial here because that's how we keep it away from the United States long term. When does that happen? Well, we think we're going to start to see that turn begin by Sunday night into Monday morning. Now the question right now with forecasters is how quickly and abrupt is this turn? Is it a slower, more gradual turn? That could be problematic for islands closer to the Turks and Caicos, or is it more of a rapid turn to the north? That would be best case scenario if we could thread this thing through Bermuda 
and the United States. Now the cone only goes out five days because beyond five days our forecast the uh, the error is just too great. I mean you're talking about you start getting hundreds of miles of error here once you get out beyond five days and that is one of the hardest part of this current forecast. Now the turn we do think the turn is going to happen still but there's been some slight adjustments over the past 24 hours on when does that turn actually happen and you can see Sunday uh, really Saturday night to Sunday morning we have the system basically traveling due northwest. We've got to get this thing to turn sooner rather than later on Sunday because we need it to go out to sea. You can see there are some models that have it a little bit closer to the Turks and Caicos. There are a few models that turn it faster. So Monday morning is going to be crucial here to get this thing to turn out to sea. Now, when you look at all of our tropical models, they all still agree the turn is going to happen. They've just shifted a little further off to the west here with the past couple of updates. Has it been significant shifts? We don't have a landfalling storm anywhere on the east coast with any of these tropical models. In fact, still hundreds and hundreds, if not a thousand miles off the east coast, but we got to watch these trends because with that being seven days away, we're still very much in a changing forecast period. We could still see some significant changes in the eventual track seven days out. Five days out seems pretty certain up until this point. Where it gets uncertain is how does this thing turn and turns are hard to forecast here, especially when you've got it being a windshield wiper effect across the East Coast. So let's talk about some things that could go wrong with this turn that could put the US in a bit more of um, a situation where we'd have to watch this closer. I don't see the Gulf being a problem at this point. All right, steering currents in the near term, it's riding under this ridge of high pressure. The ridge is gonna start to weaken Saturday into Sunday. So that's why this thing starts to gain more latitude. The thing helping us weaken this ridge is that right there, this trough of low pressure that's gonna swing down over Eastern Canada. Now what's important is how long does that trough stick around? We need that trough to be there to keep this ridge from getting strong again and to keep it out to sea. So when you put this in motion, you see that trough swinging through and swinging out. We can't let that happen too quickly because then if that happens, the ridge starts to connect again and you get a system that wants to get closer to the US. So if you've been watching the models, the GFS and the European, a few of them have trended a little bit closer to the East Coast here. None of them haven't making landfall, but they've trended further west because they think this trough of low pressure may not be as strong and it may be exiting a little bit faster. That's not a good thing. So we're going to be watching that trend very, very closely. Now again, every single model you look at still has that curve, but it is all about the timing. We cannot have a ridge developing ahead of Aaron as it tries to skirt the East Coast. That's a recipe for uh oh's. All right, so when you look at our tropical models here, this is one of the examples I was talking about. This is the GFS American model ensemble. So we take that one American, the GFS model, and we run it 31 different times, changing a little bit here and there. We change the ridge, we change the trough. And this is what's happened over the past 24 hours. The red lines are what the models were showing yesterday, early Wednesday morning. The green models are what our models were showing this morning, so 24 hours later, and you can see a clear shift to the west. Yesterday they were centered over the Bermuda area. Today they're centered in between the east coast and Bermuda. Now notice there's only a couple having direct landfalls in the U.S., so we're still fairly confident that the out-to-sea option seems more likely, but you're starting to get into this trend where you want it to stop, you don't want it to continue, so it'll be interesting to see what these uh, next round of models hold. We run this four times a day, by the way. Every six hours, you get updates on what these models are doing and so we'll be watching for the next round to come out later this afternoon but not necessarily a great trend now the good news is they're mostly still curving out to sea but it makes you hold your breath a little bit more and that's why the east coast really really needs to watch this closely now regardless of how close this thing gets to the east coast this is going to be a mega storm with waves so the storm is small right now it's going to stay small but as a storm continuously grows day and day and day. The wind field spreads, the waves become more of a concern. And look at this. This is next Wednesday and Thursday. We've got waves in the Atlantic all the way from the east coast of Bermuda, easily 10 to 20 feet. You're talking about pretty big um, beach erosion here, especially in those typical areas that you see the videos come through the Carolinas. I'm concerned about beach erosion here. I'm also concerned about rip currents. You're not going to be at the beach here along the East Coast through the middle of next week. And the close you get to the center of Aaron, you're talking about 30, 40, and some models have been spitting out over waves 
50 feet tall. And I just want to say they've got it maxed out at a Cat 3 right now. There are several models fitting out Category 4 storms, and so that is not out of the realm of possibilities. So the wind field with this thing is fairly small right now. I do see a potential for tropical storm conditions uh, for the islands. Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands need to be preparing for tropical storm conditions uh, Saturday into Sunday. The core of the worst winds are probably north of the islands, though, where you have some hurricane. I want you to watch this. Watch how the storm goes from this to just explodes into a much larger storm. Look at the wind field growing. Even if the storm is hundreds of miles off, if it's a big hurricane, you could still have tropical storm conditions along the, Car the outer banks there in the Carolinas and then just continues to grow in size as it eventually travels to the north. So that is the latest on Aaron. The overall message is we still got a long ways to watch this thing. Luckily, Hurricane Hunter planes are going to be flying in it tonight. They will be regularly flying into this thing for probably the rest of its life here. That data is crucial because it helps us forecast these things long term. So that's what's going on with Aaron. That's what's going on with Invest 98. We'll continue to have your Tropical Weather Impact episode right here on WWL Plus and all of our other streaming services. They start at 10 a.m. Central, but if you do miss the live ones, you'll be able to watch the recordings right here on all of our other services. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you right back here tomorrow for your Friday morning update.